Welcome to Crafty Chemist Designs. Today I have a great project for you. But first, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel so that you are alerted every time I drop a new video. On to the project. Today I am going to be creating this beautiful scrapbook layout using the Cosette collection. It's so beautiful. It's sort of romantic. It's got a French vibe with the, the French words and images. But you really can make this layout with any um, paper pack. It's actually a great layout for scraps because I'm really only using a little bit of the pattern paper here on the left. So if you have some scraps, this is a good layout. Okay, let me see if I can put these together so we can see both. Okay, so I'm going to take the mulberry and um, you'll see that I did gut out the center. You don't have to, but um, I was getting low on a lot of my paper because I was holding out for the cardstock carnival. And I did replenish my stocks with the cardstock carnival. Okay, so let's get the mulberry. And like I said, if you're using a different paper pack, just get whatever piece you want for your um, uh, your backing. And I'm going to I'm, I am going to gut this. Um, let's see my lights in the way a little bit okay um, I'm gonna take it about an inch and a half an inch and a quarter out so I'm gonna start an inch and a quarter going down to an inch and a quarter from the bottom and I'm doing an inch and a quarter because one that's how far my cutter is extends on the right side which makes it really easy and it is leaves enough for the the next layer to um, cover it this one I think I probably did two inches but if this is too much work for you you can just leave it but like I said I was getting a little bit low on some of my colors so I started gutting them. Okay, so now I'll be able to use this um, mulberry paper. I could I could use it for these um, mats for my pictures. So you can see I can get all of this done with one sheet of the paper, and I don't have to um, do another paper. You know, use up a whole another sheet of paper to do that. I'm not going to gut the blue, the mist, so that I'm just going to put on. Okay, so let's measure how big this is. This, the mist cover mat, so the mat that's sitting on top of the base page is 10 and 3 fourths, 10 and 3 fourths by 10 and 3 fourths. And I will tell you that the size of these matters because if you want these pieces to line up perfectly, you need to have this white piece be that particular size. So that's why um, it's it's at least a little important to have the white be the exact color or the exact size. Okay, so I'm going to cut this mist. You see, that's the that's the light side. I'm going to cut the dark side. At 10 and 3 fourths by 10 and 3 fourths. Okay, and then I will save these for later. Okay, and then I will just tape that onto my base. And I want the dark side to show up, so I'm going to um, put adhesive on 
the light side. And on this one, you want to make sure that you are applying the adhesive as close to the edge as you can because you don't want it to go over into the open spot, right? So that it's, you know, sticky on the back in your album. Okay. So I'm just gonna line this up on my VersaMat and then line this up evenly. And it's about a half inch all the way around. So I'm going to line up this mist with the half inch here and the half inch here and then the half inch here and the half inch there. So that's where I'm gonna try and put the corners. And then it should be a half inch all the way around. Okay. Okay, and then let's do the white piece or the French vanilla, whichever color you're using. And this one's going to be 10 and a half by 10 and a half. So this is the important size, is the 10 and a half, okay? This one, you could make this bigger or smaller. Obviously it has to be at least 10 and three fourths to have a little bit of the border showing, but you, you could have made it 11 if you wanted to. But let's make this at 10 and a half. My blade is getting a little bit, it looks like I need a new one. I got a little bit of fuzzies on the edge, 10 and a half. <coughs> okay, so this is going to be 10 and a half square. And I happen to have a nail file on my desk because I broke my nail yesterday. So I'm just, wait, I'm just gonna swipe it on the edges. Not to distress it, but to try and get rid of the, the little pieces from my cutter not being, my cutter not being the best. You see how it's like, with the little fibers. This nail file works pretty good. I do have a sanding block, but I don't know what I did with it. So, okay, that's fine. Okay, now this one I'm just going to attach. And this one, you don't have to be quite as careful about getting it right up against the edges because I didn't gut the mist piece. Although I could have gutted that if I, if I really wanted to. Okay, so this one's only going to show about, a, um, say a quarter of an inch on each side. Or an eighth of an inch, a quarter of an inch all around. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now we have the base done. Now let's do the decoration here. These pieces are one and a half by three. So three inches by one and a half. So one and a half by three. Okay, so this layout design is actually a really good one if um, you want to use up your scraps from a, a collection. So if you have some collection that you've only got a few pieces left, this is a great layout design. Okay, I already cut some of my pieces up. Um, so I'm not going to use a whole new sheet, but let's see. Okay. What we're going to need is we need, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you're going to need seven pieces that are one and a half by three. So basically what you want to do is use one of each of the 
six designs of the paper and then one of them is going to have to repeat. <coughs> okay, because you need seven. So like I can use one, two, three, four, and then five, six, and then I'll have to repeat something. Okay, um, so let's cut these. Like I said, I already got some of these cut to one and a half. Let me check to make sure. So it's yeah, one and a half by three. So here's one piece. And then I can use the reverse side. That should be by three. Yeah, one and a half by three. So that's a second piece. So there's two. <clears throat> this one. There's a piece that's three inches. Let me make sure it's one and a half. Okay, so I've got three pieces so far. Let's cut this one, one and a half, by three. We'll, be, we'll use this side. So now I've got four pieces. So then I'll use the reverse side. Okay, so that's five. So which one did we not use? We used this one. We used this one. Okay. And let's we'll use this piece here. Let's get this one and a half. And then I like this piece here, so let's cut this three. You know what? I want to keep that whole butterfly, so I'm going to cut it here and then trim it because I want the whole butterfly to show. Okay, so one and a half by three, so that's six pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six, and now one more, which we can, we'll use this side. And I like the little um, Eiffel Tower showing. Okay, so that's seven pieces. Okay, I think we're done cutting until we um, do the mats. Okay, so now all I'm going to do is line these up to be in this particular you know order just put them in an order that you like and it should um match exactly the ten and a half that's why it was kind of important to have seven and you know to have your paper be ten and a half well I can already see that I've got too many of these blank ones or these kind of white background ones together. Okay, that's a little bit better. Let me see if I like any of the other sides of these. Okay, this is pretty good. So these should, if these were all cut to one and a half, It should equal the, the 10 and a half. Okay, yeah, I think that's gonna be, it's gonna be perfect. Well, that's not too bad. I might move these two. No, I'm gonna keep it like that. The third one up says smile on the other side. Is this smile in French? You think I should put that side up? Or this one? Oh, all smiles. Okay, I see. Okay, yeah. Let's do that. All smiles, Marseille. I'd love to go to Marseille. Okay, so now all we have to do is tape these down. 
right along. So they should match. Okay, so it, will it confuse anybody if I put it on the right side so that I can mirror my image? That's what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape them over here. If you want to make one like this, you keep them on this side, I'm going to put it you know, over here. Hopefully that's not confusing to you, but I want to have, you know, a two-page layout. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay. And I like my layout, or the you know, the layout of them, so I'm going to keep it. And you'll notice that I did, um, I did try and vary it a little bit from what was on this side. So I didn't want them to be, you know, exactly in the same spot. If you want them to match exactly, you can do that. Like I could have put this here and then put the blue one, you know, if I wanted to. I'm going to use my T-square from Close to My Heart to try and make sure these stay straight. Because so I felt like it was getting a little bit angled there. So let's see. Seems okay. Ugh, I'm out of tape. I gotta change my roller. Hopefully I have some more. <clears throat> I'm getting low and I'm... I need to go on a retreat weekend in a couple weeks, so... I better order another another box of these for the retreat. I might try and order the, um, what is the one, the big one called? The pink, the big pink roller. If anybody has that, give me your opinions. The, I don't know, remember the big gun, the gun looking one. I, I don't know. Maybe for the retreat, I should do that so I don't run out. I remember one time, I think maybe it was the last time we went to the Stampin' Scrapbook Expo. I brought all kinds of adhesive and I ran out. And I think I borrowed adhesive from every single person at my table. Okay, there you go. So here, <clears throat> you see how it it, adds, it equals out perfectly. That's why this white piece has to be ten and a half. Yes, I went through everybody's spare adhesive. <laughs> it was really crazy. The ATG. Okay, give me your opinions on the ATG because since I need to reorder some adhesive, I might need to invest in that. Because I just go through these too fast. But I like the dots adhesive runner. I don't like tape. I don't like the adhesive tape. And that has been the only reason why I have not already um, gone to the ATG. It's just because it's tape and not um, the dots. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So now um, you can see I put a piece of shimmer trim here. Now I, um, the, the yellow color in this collection is honey butter. I do not have honey butter shimmer trim, but I do have lemonade. So I think it looks okay with it. I'm actually not even sure if the shimmer trim comes in Honey butter. I want to let's look that up because I don't want to tell you to. Okay, here's a shimmer trim. Okay, no, it, it doesn't even come in honey butter, so that's okay. So there is gold. You could use gold. You can. Well, they, there's mist. 
So there's mist in this. So you could use the mist, which is uh, 20. This one here is mist. Um, and there is pine, which is 23. So you could use mist or pine if you don't have the lemonade. And the lemonade obviously was a leftover from the previous catalog. Okay, so let's get this. And remember, always leave, always leave the tail on your shimmer trim so you can just see how easy that was to peel back. And I'm going to go right along the edge. I'm gonna put it right up here. And then I'm going to stretch it straight down to keep it even. There you go. And then I'll cut it. Okay, there you go. And so I left this on. I will cut a little piece here. Okay, so now let's do the mats. So this one's four and a quarter by six and a quarter. And this one is three and a quarter by four and a quarter. So let's use that piece that I got out of the middle and make a four and a quarter by six and a quarter. That's six and a quarter, make a four and a quarter. And then um, I'm going to do a four and a quarter by three and a quarter. If you want to do um, different size pictures, you can. You could do two, um, two four by sixes if you want to. You could do, you know, multiple three and a quarter by four and a quarter. You could also stick some three and a quarter by four and a quarters like here and do four. One, two, three, four. That would work too. But th for this layout, I used, I used this. And if you noticed, um, this one is up against the paper. This one I put on foam tape, okay? And the reason I did that is because I wanted this, you can see that I did not tape this down. It's got foam tape there, but the backing is not off, so I could still put my picture down. And then once I put the picture down, I'll be able to take off the backing and stick it down. So that's why I popped this one up, just to make it a little bit easier. Okay? And let me show you where these pieces are. So this one I did about... It's at about nine and a quarter from the bottom. And two and three quarters. And then this one, it goes up to about nine and a half. So this is nine and a quarter to nine and a half. And about two and three quarters over. So let's do that. Again, you can just eyeball that, but I'm, I'm telling you where, how I did this. So let's adhere this down. So the side closest to the edge was nine and a quarter. So again, let me, let me use this to show you about nine and a quarter. And then I was two and three quarters here. So it's going to be about right there. And then this this side goes up to about nine and a half. It goes up to about nine and a half. So it's a little bit at an angle. Okay, now let's do this next one. Um, and like I said, it is on, um, on foam tape. So I use the foam tape roll because I use so much of it. I'm putting these just up and down because this is the piece I'm going to leave the backing on because that's the piece that's going to go on the 
the photo, you know, below that. Okay. And before I stick this down, I'm going to put the photo placeholder. If you don't have a photo placeholder, I mean, you can leave it blank. You don't have to put anything on it. Or you can put a piece of, um, even just like typing paper is good. Okay. So now this one, let's see where this one fits. Okay, this one, this piece is about, I'm going to say it's about an eight. And then it goes up to about eight and a half, eight and eight and a half. And it's at about the ten and a half mark on my mat. Okay. So ten and a half would be here, the, the two and a half. I'm going to take these off. But leave this one on because that's the piece that's going to go over top of that. So what did I say? Was that about... Nine and a, eight and a half, about eight and a half here, and then two and a half. Okay, one thing is you want you want it to overlap this a little bit, but not a lot because you want to be able to see this picture. Okay, so I'm going to put it like this. Okay. And you can see that this this is still not taped down. And then let's put this three by four placeholder on there. Okay, now we have the fun of decorating. So I'm going to use a combination of the die cuts and the stickers. I always recommend getting the embellishment and the sticker paper, or sticker with the paper. That's my go-to for every collection, is I get the paper pack, um, the coordinating card stock, the embellishment, and then I make sure I get the paper with um, the stickers. So you can get the paper pack with or without the stickers, but you know, everything matches so perfectly. You definitely want to have stickers that match exactly. It's the same style, right? It's, so you always have the same style. You don't want to use beautiful romantic paper and then your stickers be like cutesy Mrs. Grossman looking stuff, right? So the style is always the same. Okay, so I think I'm going to use, I'll put the good times here. And this, I don't know, this... Let's see if I left enough room for this. I don't know. Uh, it's a little bit too, not enough room. Okay. That's okay. I wasn't going to use it. I was going to use the Good Times title. So I'll, I'll continue with that. So I'm going to put this kind of in the middle. So that this goes from, say, one to eight. So seven, three and a half. So right around here is going to be the center. And I'm not going to put them down all the way until I get them lined up. You can use your T-square to make sure it's lined up if you want. This one was one whole sticker, so that was easy. Okay, but this one, these are individual letters. I want to try and space them evenly, you know, this way and have them line up at the bottom. Mine wasn't cut all the way through. 
Yeah, it's. I had to rip that off, and now that T isn't sticky there. Okay. Another good thing about, I mean, these stickers is you can see that this font is exactly the same. So, I, okay, I like how that is. So let's push these down. Look even all over. Okay, and then the good, good times, I'm gonna put here. Um, and I think I'm going to pop this up because the together was popped up. I couldn't pop these up because this, right, they're really thin sticker letters, so that would not have been very easy to do unless I put it on some kind of backing, which I could have done. But this is an eighth of an inch foam tape, and this is on my this is on my blog too, too, and my favorites. It's really great for these little details. If you want to pop something really thin up, okay. Okay, let's put this, put the backing off of this. And again, you could have used, you know, whatever stickers that, that you wanted. You know, you might not want to use two titles on one layout, but together, good times. I think that's good. Now let's do the um, die cuts. I really love this butterfly one here. Um, so what can we put? I don't want another butterfly, but maybe we could put this bird. There's a really pretty bird here. Let's see how we think that looks. Okay. That looks nice. And then I have um, a flower there. Oh, this is a bigger bird. Let's see if the bigger bird looks better there. Oh, and it's going the other way. I think I like it better like that. Okay. I do have a flower. Let's see this one. Okay, and then I had a little um, banner thing there. I'm gonna do this one. Oh, it's a round one. I don't know, the letters are kind of backwards on that. These are not really great for putting underneath. Let's see, well, I do have that one. I mean, you see how the letters go sideways, which I don't really want. So, I'll use this one. I'll use the same one. Like, if I put, if I plan to put this, like, here, that would be fine. Like, I could put it there. In fact, maybe I could put it there. Oh, I don't really like it there. It's just kind of plopped in the middle. I could put it there. And then put this here. Although I think I need, I need it more, something up here. You can't really see those there, though. So I'm going to keep that there. Okay, and again, what's great about these is you can use regular adhesive on this because it's so thin. <clears throat> I 
Okay, so let's put these down. I'm just going to use regular adhesive. Pop that there. I'll pop this one here. But, like, cut off her head, though. That's kind of... I don't know if anybody will be able to tell, but... It's kind of funny. And then the flower. And the flower does have an angel on it a little bit. So when I put it down, I want to make sure that um, the angel's up. And I'm not going to put adhesive on these two pieces because that's going to be on top of my photo. And since I don't have the photo there yet. Okay, the last thing is... Oh, wait, there's a couple stickers here. Let's... let's pop a few stickers around. Um, I think I might put smile, smile, smile here. And I don't know, maybe these. I could have put this, but Let's put these here. Well, I don't like it because of that, so let's not put these. Maybe I will. Oh, I could put Marseille. Let's see if this fits here. If I can get this up. That's a little bit big for that. Let's put this back. Let's let's maybe do the Marseille. Oh, you know what I could do? I could do this one. What fit? And then that could be my journaling. No, I don't like that. Is this how you do? This is how literally how I design my my pages. And this is why I own stock in Undo. I don't like that there either. It just looks like it's sitting there. I don't know which one of these to put on there. I could put the little bird, but that bird is there. I don't know. Let's, let's make the little bird sit on top of here. I kind of like that. Okay. I'm happy with that. Okay, and then the last thing is I did put sparkles. I put like five sparkles. So let's do that. Okay, I've got the sparkles. These are clear sparkles. And I'm going to use my piercing tool to... Remove these and place them. So let's see, I have five on the other one, so let's put five here. I could put three if I want. And I'll put one here. just to give it a little bit of sparkle. Because with the shimmer with the shimmer trim and the sparkle, it will be really, look really good. Okay, there we go. There is the layout, look how easy that was. Thank you for watching this video. I have a Facebook business page, Crafty Chemist Designs, where I go live every Sunday at 4 p.m. Central Time to do demos. I have a Facebook VIP group, The Crafty Chemist Presents. You can share your artwork, ask questions. And I have an Instagram and TikTok, Crafty Chemist Designs, where I post um, artwork every day. And I have a blog, periodicallycrafty.blogspot.com.